forever. We bless you. Father, tonight, let there be a difference in all our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you to this month's vigil, the month of October. Amen. And it's been combined with our day two of our workers' retreat for this year. I believe that there is somebody here that God is prepared to equip, to bless, and to take to a new level of greatness. And if you are that one that God is going to single out tonight, even as you have um, left your, the comfort of your bed, even to come to his presence, if you are the one that God is going to single out for a great blessing, I want to hear your hallelujah in agreement. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You will not go back the same way you have come. God will do that which he has prepared to do in your life, in your destiny, in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's clap for the choir. Even as they take their seats, they will come back shortly again. Praise the name of the Lord. We are getting to the end of the year, 2022. We're in fact we're in the last quarter of the year. Amen. And a lot of people are burnt out, they are tired, and they are showing signs of fatigue. Amen. Even in the redeemed Christian Church of God, it's the beginning of a new year. So there is no better time than this to have our workers retreat so that we can be touched again by the fire of God. Our strength can be renewed and we can be ready to run even into the weeks, the months ahead in the name of Jesus. God will rekindle your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. The theme for our workers retreat this year is let your light shine. And that is what I'm going to be speaking on even in tonight's vigil. And as we get ready to dine with the Lord on the communion table, quickly I will just bring forth a short exhortation and we go into the communion. Quickly, I will take my text from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, 15, and 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It says, No, do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand? And it gives light to all who are in the house. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the name of of Jesus. Please, let's bow our heads quickly as we pray. Our Father, we thank you, O Lord God, for the month of October. Thank you for what you have done in this month of pressing towards the goal. Thank you for fighting for us. Thank you for giving us victory. Thank you, O Lord, for putting the enemy to shame in all our lives. Thank you, O Lord God, for our expectations. Thank you for today. Thank you for what you are going to do tomorrow. Lord, I ask, O oh Lord, that even tonight, let your fire fall. Let it touch us. Let it burn out everything in us that will not allow us to glorify your name. Lord God, by the reason of this vigil tonight, our lives will be renewed. We will be more than conquerors. We will be victorious. We will be energized. And we will have a fresh start. Father, take all control, and at the end of it all, let your name be exalted. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Beloved, tonight, as we come to the communion table to receive strength from above, I'm going to speak on the same theme as the workers' retreat, which is let your light shine. To shine is to radiate what you carry on the inside. I want us to follow very closely because I'm going to be saying some things that if you can hold it, it will energize you. It will turn things around in your favor. To shine is to radiate what you carry on the inside. 
what you carry on the inside is a combination of who you are and where your focus lies. So when we are talking about what you carry inside, it's about who you truly are and where your focus lies. Amen? Who you are will actually be determined by where your heart lies. Who you are will actually be determined by where your heart lies. Amen? If you keep your focus on God and his kingdom, it will reflect on who you are. So when people look at you, they can't know anything about you, but the things that you do, it will reflect on where your heart lies. Praise the name of the Lord. If you keep your focus outside of God's kingdom, it will reflect on who you are going to become. Matthew chapter 6 verse 21. Matthew 6 21. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. A human being. It is where your treasure is, where your mind is focused on. That is where everything will drive us. If you are looking to God's kingdom, your mind is focused on God. It will show in the things you do, in the place you go, in the relationship you keep, in the expectations you have. If your mind is outside of God's kingdom, it will also show. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you focus on your treasure, amen, in God's kingdom, it will transform you into a delight in pleasing God. And that is what I want to drive home tonight. If you focus on the God's treasure that is inside of you, it will drive you, it will propel you, it will turn you into a delight in pleasing God. All the things we are looking for, everything that you can ever think, imagine, God is able to do it. All your expectations, the things that make you cry at night, the things that make you run around looking for money, the things that you are expecting, the things that they mock you about, everything you can ever think of. You can find it in God's kingdom. But when you try to do it on your own, like many of us do, that's when we run into a problem. Because we are limited. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The people we are trusting, they are also limited. The systems of government is, is limited. Everything except God is limited. Everything you can think of. Everything. Even me that is speaking to you as your pastor, I'm also limited. So our focus needs to come back to where our delight is. Where our treasure, where each and every one of us have a treasure that God has prepared for you. When you go outside, there is no treasure there. It might look as if it's a treasure. By the time you see it and you open it, it's empty. Hearts are broken. Hopes are dashed. People are dejected. Failure is the order of the day. Promises are not kept. You can see it all over. Why? Because that is the kingdom outside of God. So tonight, as we've come for the vigil, and we are combining the workers' retreat, it's very good because everybody here, all what we are going to be discussing in our workers' retreat, everybody needs it. Whether you are not even a worker yet, you need it for your success and your empowerment for your destiny. So our, or let me say, my um, assignment tonight is to bring our focus back to where our treasure lies. And that is in the kingdom of God. So when you focus on God, you will become a delight and you begin to please God. You see, a lot of us, our hearts have gone far. Our hearts have gone far. We come to church. Even when pastor is preaching, you don't even care. You don't, you don't listen. You say, what's he going to say? I've heard everything before. Somebody else is preaching, your mind is running all over the place. You need to come back. Come back to the kingdom. That's where your treasure is. 
That's where your blessing is. That's where your protection is. That's where your saving grace is. That is from there your helper will come out. Everything is in the hand of God. Everything. Child, promotion, money, prosperity, fame, relevance, you name it. It's all in the kingdom. So we have all it takes. But what do we do? Our heart begins to go outside. And we toil, we labor, we get frustrated, we get dejected, we get discouraged, and we look burnt out. So we need a rekindle, a realignment, a rearrangement, and a refocus on what we need to do for our success to come. So to become a delight in God's presence, your life will showcase so many tendencies, so many, when you become a delight. In other words, for you to become a delight, you are focused. If it's only that word you can get tonight, for you to be a delight in God, you must be focused on God and his kingdom. And anybody who is focused on God and his kingdom, for such a fellow, all that is interested in, number one priority, is to please God. In the process of pleasing God, so many things will happen for you. Number one, you will seek to please God in all your doings. That's number one. Number two, you will carry the burden of advancing God's kingdom. Now, we look at ourselves as workers. Many of us, we don't carry that burden of advancing God's kingdom. Everything that has to do with the kingdom of God, we put it at the back. And we put our own in the front. And the Bible has told us in Matthew 6, 33, that we should seek God's kingdom first. He knows why he said so. He didn't say it because you, he thinks, oh, do my own first. Like human beings will say, oh, let, let me satisfy myself. You are occupying an office. No, let me please myself. Let me eat enough first before I will give to my neighbor. No. He didn't say it because of that intention. He said it because he knows that inside the kingdom, that's where your treasure is. And everybody is looking for treasure. The reason why you are going to work is treasure you are looking for. The reason why you are doing business is treasure. The reason why they go into politics is for treasure. The reason why people are jackpine is for treasure. Everybody is seeking for treasure. And where is the treasure? Inside the kingdom of God. So, if you carry the body of advancing God's kingdom, then you are shocking the tendency of someone that delights in God's presence. Number three, you will love your neighbor. You will love your neighbor. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. You will love your neighbor. And this is the second most important commandment. When you love God, the next thing that God expects from you is to love your neighbor. You will be a true ambassador of Christ. Amen? Ready to tell others about the love and goodness of Jesus. If we ask ourselves and we take statistics, a lot of us, they don't even know whether you are a Christian in your place of work in the place that you live. Even your brethren, your family members don't even know if you are a Christian. Talk less of you telling them about the love of Christ. It is our duty, it's a commandment, it's an instruction that God gives to us that we must go and preach the gospel. Amen? So, we must be true ambassadors representing Jesus in every way that we find ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Number five, you will hardly be distracted from um, you, you, won't be, you will hardly be distracted from God's kingdom in which your treasure lies. A lot of people are distracted. We are distracted. We are distracted with so many things. So many things. The issues of life have distracted a lot of people. You know, and once the enemy brings distraction your way, all that the enemy is trying to achieve is to ensure that the treasure that's prepared for you, you don't find it. So it takes you outside of God's kingdom. 
and you begin to say, ah, we have not seen you in church for one week. Oh, you start to tell a lot of things that are not true. You start to lie. You know, or you, your, what, maybe you call it half truth. You know, half truth is, is equivalent to a lie. You start to tell, give conditions that are not true. Why? Because you are distracted. And when you are distracted, you lose the possibility of getting your treasure. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Number six, issues of life will not put you down. Rather, it will be a stepping stone to your manifestation of greatness. No complaints and no discouragement. Nothing that will come your way that will keep you under. Why? Because you already know that you are going to win. Amen? You already know. When the children of Israel were faced with the Red Sea, Amen? God did not take away the sea and just remove it. He parted it so they can go through the trial and come out victorious. That's how God works. God will not remove your problem. You will pass through it and you come out victorious. Check all the people that have gone through trials. Everybody. That is how God operates. So once you are on God's side, you are in the kingdom. Let the problem come. You will win. You will win. You will win. So rather than you having the assurance, rather than having the assurance of victory, you begin to panic. You begin to fret. You begin to make mistakes. You begin to run from the place where your solution is, looking for it where there's no solution. And in the process, accumulate more problems. That's what we're having in retreat. So that we can refocus our mind on the treasure that is before us. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, number seven. Your faith will be rekindled. Your faith will be rekindled. Your faith. And you know what the meaning of faith? You believe even before you see it. The manifestation has not come. But you are so, so sure that you will get this thing. You are so sure that God will show up for you. You are so sure that you will triumph. That is what is faith. Receiving expectation before the manifestation. Your faith will be rekindled. And the Bible tells us that if you don't have faith, it is not possible to be a pleaser of God. And remember, we started that anyone that is a delight in God is pleasing God. That is it. You must please God. Without faith, it's not possible for you to please God. Because you are going to be believing things before they come into manifestation. Because you know that you will triumph. Number nine, very quickly, you will carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. And anyone that carries the fire of the Holy Ghost will walk in dominion. You are in control. You carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 10, fear will completely die in your life. Fear. Fear is so terrible. Fear. If you, the enemy captures you in fear, you can never succeed in whatever you are doing. Because you will believe the lie of the devil. You will believe that everything cannot work. You will be so frightened to even do what is right. Even the things that God has, a, has promised you, you will not believe it. Why? Because you are walking in fear. That's why the, the, the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear has no bearing in the kingdom of God. The only person you have to fear is the Almighty God. And why do you fear him? Because you know is the author and the finisher of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And quickly, number 11, you will be established in fruitfulness. So you see, all these things we have listed is even the reason why we are doing the retreat. For us to come back and focus on the kingdom of God and we get all these treasures. This is indeed 
the true meaning of shining. Amen? If you don't have the inner light, which is the Holy Spirit, working in you and through you, there is no light in you to shine forth. So when we say let your light shine, it means you're in, there's something inside of you that is radiating to others. That's when your light will shine. If there is no spirit of God inside of you, there is nothing to shine. Darkness cannot shine. It's only light that can shine. God will give us more understanding in the name of Jesus. You need light. You need light and you need the light to shine. Amen. And you need that light of God to dwell inside of you. The retreat is to rekindle your inner man to focus on God so that your light will shine forth and others will see you and give glory to God Almighty. I pray for all workers, ministers, and indeed everyone, every one of us, amen, that God will open our eyes to see and to understand that our great treasures lies in his kingdom and that our focus will be in his kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. So tonight, we're going to go into communion, and as we come into the communion table tonight, let us come with an expectation of rekindling our lost fire. Because there is no one that has not lost some levels of the fire of God in him or her. We rekindle the newness of life and there will be new strengths and grace to please God in all our doings. This is a communion to reawaken us to stay focused on God's kingdom so that we can get our true treasures in the mighty name of Jesus. Treasures of gold that no more, no evil can take away. Treasures that will last forever. Treasures that causes blessings with no sorrows attached to it. Treasures that God gives to us and there are no conditions that will cause you to run from pillar to post. Praise the name of the Lord. So firstly, for those who want to repent and to surrender, this is your moment. So let the choir come up. Amen. First Corinthians 11, 27 to 30. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30, it says, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of, of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and they may even die. So while all heads are bowed this moment, you are here tonight. You might even be a worker, and you know that you need to repent before we come for the communion table. This is your moment. This is your moment. You cannot partake in the communion when you are not born again when your life is tainted with sin. But the opportunity is now because immediately God is available to forgive you and to bring you into his kingdom. In fact, you need to come in so that you can get your own treasure too because there's a treasure prepared for you. So tonight, you want to say, Father, I'm here. I'm surrendering unto you quickly where you are seated. Just slip up your hand unto Jesus and I will lead you in prayer quickly. Anyone like that? Praise the mighty name of the Lord. I will say it again. You want to say, Father, I am here. I want to surrender my life to you so that I can receive my own treasure and I can partake in the communion tonight so that I will not eat or drink into condemnation. Thank you, my brother. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Anyone joining him very quickly? Our time, my time is already over. Amen. So if you are raising up your hand, you are going to say this prayer after me. You are going to pray and say, Father, I'm sorry for my sin. You tell him in prayer that I repent 
over my sin. Please forgive me in the name of Jesus. Pray and say, Father, I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. At this very moment, I confess you as Lord and Savior. Please write my name in the book of life and please lead me to the treasures that you have prepared for me in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. You said that prayer, I welcome you into the family of God. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. The second category, yes, you are born again, but you know you are not worthy. Because the scripture I read said it clearly, if you come unworthy. What does it mean to be unworthy? There is something, maybe you are keeping malice, you are not forgiving your wife or your brother, or there's something you've done that you know that the enemy is reminding you that if you go there, you will eat and you will die. For such a fellow, you also need to come and say, Father, forgive me and remove every impediment so that I can partake in the communion tonight. Anybody like that? Yes, I know you are already born again, but you need to say, Father, please forgive me for this or that that I've done. If you are like that, lift up your hands unto Jesus quickly so that I can also pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are lifting up your hand, yes, Father, thank you. For all those who are lifting up their hands, Father, you know all things. We ask that you show your mercy. Cleanse them from every impediment of sin. Cleanse them from every shortcoming. And my Father, give them strength never to fall back into sin. Let it be well with them. Cleanse them and cause their lives to be worthy even before you tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So when we come forward, we are going to receive the bread and the wine. We can take the bread, amen, but hold on to the wine so that we can take it together. Father, we commit these elements into your hands, the bread and the wine. Lord, we pray that the bread will turn to your body and the wine will turn to your blood. We ask, O oh Father, that your power, your authority, your grace, your blessing will come down mightily on the communion tonight and as we partake, there will be an instant manifestation of that which you have prepared for us even tonight in the name of Jesus. Bless it, sanctify it in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. John chapter 6 verse 53 to 58. The Bible says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. He says, For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Let's go ahead. Let's go take the bread we can eat it and just begin to pray and thank God for what he wants to do in your life tonight. But please hold on to the wine because we are going to take it together.
understanding, with vigor, with determination, that we will not go back the same way. All that we have come to do tonight, if this prayer is answered in your life, you are settled forever and ever. And the prayer that we pray, after we take the wine together now, we are going to pray I just read it for you so you have it in your mind. Then after the wine, we'll take it. Your prayer is, Father, let the life of Christ that carries fire, grace, power, and glory be rekindled in me again. If the life of Christ is rekindled in you and you are carrying the fire, the same fire of the Holy Ghost, that same power that rose Jesus from the dead, if the life of Christ is rekindling in you and you are carrying grace so that what you do not qualify for you are receiving it what you, your name will just be coming out in everything that is good you don't need to know anybody you will begin to receive supernatural divine assistance that's been of grace amen if the life of Christ is rekindling in you that carries power the enemy will see you I'll begin to run. Not you running from the enemy. You, you'll be coming, they will run. Your name is mentioned, they will run away. Everything you touch, they will flee because there's a fire that is burning. And that's the true meaning of power. You see, when we talk of power, power goes to authority. You will be, when you talk, <laughs> it will be power. When you speak things, it will come to manifestation because the enemy will be forced to obey. Then there's a glory. The glory that will cause you to shine as light. Amen? So, explaining these things so that you can pray very well. Because we have like two minutes of that about to pray. So, you can pray it very well. Now, we'll take the wine together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, let the life of Christ that carries your fire, power, grace, and glory be rekindled in me again in the name of Jesus. The life of Jesus, the life of Christ that carries fire, that carries your grace, that carries power and glory let it be rekindled in me again in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in me. Let it burn in me. Let it walk in me. Let it walk through me in the name of Jesus. Let me begin to receive grace, unlimited favor, supernatural assistance, divine support, breakthroughs upon breakthroughs, favor upon favor. Let the power to control, to work in authority, to work in dominion, to be established in fruitfulness. Let the glory that will cause me to shine, shine as light. Let it be rekindled in me again. Let it be rekindled. Let it be rekindled. Let it come alive in me again. In the name of Jesus. Father, let it be so. Let this night don't come to an end without all these things manifesting. By the power in the blood that I've taken on the communion table tonight. Let the fire be rekindled. Let your grace in my life be rekindled. Let your power come alive again. And let your glory come alive in my life. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Ghost. Let's clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We are still in the mood of prayer. And we are going to be praying for the church and our family. Please let's rise up on our feet. Firstly, let's begin to appreciate the name of the Lord upon the church of God. Thank God on behalf of your family. Because of everything that is happening around us, your family is still standing.
understanding. The Lord did not allow any bad thing to happen to your family, to happen to the church of God, especially praise Tabernacle, to happen to the church of God, redeem Christian church of God. Father, we say thank you. Father, we worship you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your church. Father, we thank you for our family. Father, we say thank you for your love that is keeping us. Father, we say thank you. We worship your holy name. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. So we are going to be saying, Father, add to your church praise tabernacle. Spiritually, physically, financially, and numerically. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heart to your church in the name of Jesus. Father, heart to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we need a deep mess in the name of Jesus. Numerically, Father, heart to your church in the name of Jesus. Spiritually, Father, heart to your church. Financially, heart to your church in the name of Jesus. Father, heart to your church, praise the manaku in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heart to your church in the name of Jesus. Father, heart to your church in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 says, Jesus told Peter that upon this gate, upon this rock, will he build his church, and gate of hell will not prevail. So I'm going to be saying, Father, upon your church, praise tabernacle, from every wind and storm of life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, upon your church, praise tabernacle, upon redeemed Christian church of God, in the name of Jesus. Upon every wind and storm of life, Father, help out your church in the name of Jesus. Father, help out us in the name of Jesus. Father, help out us in the name of Jesus. We pray for your church, praise the Father, help out us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's say, Father, we pray for the church leaders to follow Christ and serve him on blue. We pray for protection upon our pastors the ministers, the workers, the elders, the deacons, the teachers. Father, inspire them to dig deep into your word and root their life in you alone in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, almighty God, for your church leaders to follow Christ and serve you. Humble in the name of Jesus. Father, give us the spirit of humility. We pray for protection for the pastors, for the ministers, for the elders, for the deacons, for the teachers, for all the workers in your vineyard, for every word that is mentioned in praise tabernacle. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus to root deep in your word and to live our life in you in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. We are going to be saying, Father, we confess as a church that we want to know you more in the name of Jesus. Father, as a church in praise tabernacle, we confess that we want to know you more. Father, give us the grace to know you more. Give us the grace to serve you more in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lastly, we are going to be saying, Father, open our eyes to the harvest before us. We pray that you raise up men, women, and children to make disciples here around the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, open our eyes to the harvest that is before us. The souls that are heart, almighty God. Open our eyes as a church, almighty God. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus. We ask that you raise men, you raise women and children in the name of Jesus. From praise tabernacle as disciples. Yeah, around the world to preach your word in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are going to be pray, praying for our family now. We are going to be saying, Father, I pray for your emotional, physical, and spiritual protection over my family. Make my family strong and courageous in the presence of danger. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our family. We pray for our husband. We pray for our wives. We pray for our children. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Emotionally help us. Physically help us. Spiritually help us. Make us strong in the presence of danger. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Do not 
not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So I'm going to be saying, Father, give my family the strength not to be afraid. Give them the courage to stand up to what is right in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Almighty God, give my family the strength, the courage to stand, Almighty God, against everything that is not right in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our children in praise, Sabanako. Father, give them the courage to stand against everything that is not right in the name of Jesus. Father, give them the strength in the name of Jesus. Father, give them the strength in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's say, Father, let my family walk in your authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Almighty God, let our family walk in your authority. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever we go with our spouse, wherever our children stand, Father, let them go with authority. In the name of Jesus. Father, let them go with authority. In the name of Jesus. Father, let them go with authority. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's say, Father, let my family value God as priority in their lives. That means whatever they want to do, they will take God as the first thing. So let's take God, Father, let my family take you as priority in the name of Jesus. Let me take you as priority first in the name of Jesus. Let my spouse take you as priority in the name of Jesus. Let my children take you as priority. That you should be the first to come in everything we are going to be doing in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. To make you value as a priority in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to be saying, Father... Let my grow as Jesus Christ did. Let my children, let them grow as Jesus Christ did. In wisdom and in stature and in favor of God and man. According to your word in Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Let's turn into prayer. Father, we pray almighty God. Father, let my children grow. Father, let me grow almighty God in wisdom in statue, in favor of God and man. Let me see the favor of God and man. Let my spouse see the favor of God and man. Let my children see the favor of God and man. Let us grow in wisdom. Let us grow in your statue. Let people see you and let them see your glory in our life. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' most precious name we pray. Our righteous Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the church of God because the church of God will continue to move forward and the gate of hell will never prevail. Father, we thank you for our family, almighty God, for your love that is keeping us as one. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you because our family will continue to grow in your statue and your wisdom in the name of Jesus. We pray that your church will continue to grow and be in one accord in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' most precious name we pray.
revive me again. Turn that into prayer in the name of Jesus. We are asking for the fresh outpour of God's spirit upon us. Father, revive me again. Revive me again. Pour out your spirit, O God, upon me again. Let there be a deposit and an outpour of your spirit of revival upon our lives again. Just as it was in the time of old. Father, revive your church again. Mashabatole Kamadosa. Revive us again in your mercy. Revive us again, O God, in your mercy. Revive us again. Father, let us witness the outpour of your spirit again in our life and in all that we do. Father, revive us again in the name of Jesus Christ. Revive your church again. Revive Prince Sabanaku again. Revive the men, the women, the boys and girls again. Revive the youth again in the name of Jesus. Let this again be the season of the outpour of your power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancients of this. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Indeed, God is actually interested in our revival. He is so interested in this. That's why he actually does want us to be lukewarm. Just like he said in Revelation chapter 3 from verse 16. So then because thou hast lukewarm, neither call on us, and we spirit out of a mouth. So God is not interested in lukewarmness. So God wants us to remain on fire for him continually. So without understanding, let's say, Father, remove every spirit of lukewarmness from our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn that your prayer and say, Father, remove every fruit of lukewarmness from our midst, from our life in the name of Jesus. In this season, O God, of revival, in this season, O God, of the outpour of your spirit, remove all form of lukewarmness from your church. Remove all form of lukewarmness from our midst, from our family. Let us burn for you. Let us burn for you. In the name of Jesus. Father, revive us again. Revive us again. With power and with fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Again, let's say, Father, use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Turn your prayer and say, Father, because you are set to revive us again afresh, use me for your glory. Put your name there. Father, use me specifically for your glory. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Use me, Lord God, to manifest your glory on earth. Use me to demonstrate your power on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I can say, Father, just like it was in the days of Pentecost, let there be a sudden manifestation of the spirit of revival in praise of in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn to prayer and say, Father, just as it was on the day of Pentecost, let there be a sudden revival in praise of Let there be a sudden revival in our homes, in our families, in our lives. Let there be a solid revival. Let there be a solid revival. Let there be an outpour of your spirit. Let there be an outpour of your spirit in our life, in our midst, by the power of your name, in the name of Jesus. Father, just as it was on the day of Pentecost, Father, set us again on fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are running with time. Let it say, Father, Set my heart on fire for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, set my heart on fire for you. I want to burn for you. I want to burn for you. Set my heart on fire. Set my heart on fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Set my heart on fire. Set my heart on fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lama shikabado sindana shaka. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let again say, Father, because of the revival fire, I will receive you tonight. Put your name there. I will receive, put your name, Emmanuel will receive you tonight. 
Use me to pull down the kingdom of darkness. Use me, so set the captives free. Use me to set the bounds loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, turn it to prayer, Father. Because of the revival fire, Emmanuel said to receive here tonight. Use me, Lord God, to set the captives free. Use me to set the bounds loose. Use me, Lord God, to bring down the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us say, Father, make me vigilant. Make me vibrant. Make me battle ready. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, because it's a season of revival, make me vigilant. Make me vibrant for you. Make me battle ready for you at all times. In the name of Jesus. I will not be among those that are sleeping and slumbering. Father, make me vibrant. Make me vibrant. Make me battle ready for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make me battle ready for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I can say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I receive divine boldness as of a lion to live a victorious life. In the name of Jesus. Turn to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the boldness. I receive boldness as of a lion to live a victorious life. I will live a victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, by your mercy, I receive the boldness that I desire that will make me to live a victorious life for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lastly, from an act of scripture we read from Acts chapter 2 from verse 4, he said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the season of revival. So when the revival three came forth, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the language of the Spirit right away. In 30 seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost. Mashikamadosi brakalaida. Medo me kadayaba. Razo me kayabadosi. Ege tama zobe kayabadashada. Ramatoe kembeda. Raziko me kedo batayada. Eta masikabodeda. Rakabosi me tayedada. Rekamosheta rekade. Embosi toba. Rada kete sideke. Manabo shataye. Rakabosi tamadeda. Rade kambo shitaya. Remato mekada, ekabo zita mo rekada, mato rete kashita mo, kamadosa. Thank you, Jesus. All the glory to your name on high. Revive us again afresh by the power of your name. Thank you, ancients of days. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father. Courage 
by these trials because they are a stepping stone into our breakthrough. Let it not be what will make us to be afraid because what is ahead of us is fast, fast greater. In James chapter 1, verse 2, he said, My brethren, count it all joy when thou fall into diverse temptation. They are for our promotion. It's like you are running away from exam. Each exam you've written and you come out successful never leave you the same way you went before that exam. It's a promotion. So you don't need to run for trials and temptations. In John chapter 16 verse 3, he said in his word that in this world we shall have tribulation, but we should be of good cheer because we have overcome the world. Hence, we need to pray for strength and grace to overcome when all these trials and temptation comes our way. And in 1 Samuel verse 2, chapter 2, verse 9, he said, By strength shall no man save me. Hence, we need the grace and the strength to conquer. Let's be on our feet standing. As we pray to God, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, he said, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into and they are safe. We are going to open our mouth and say, Father, I run into you in the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower. I am safe in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Father, I run unto you. I am saving you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you are my strong tower, Lord. I run into you. I am safe in the name of Jesus. In my going out and in my coming in, I am safe in the name of Jesus. No matter the situation in the country, I am safe in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I am safe. 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 For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. We are going to say, Father, boost my energy to run the race that is set before me. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said, by strength shall no more prevail. Baba, boost in me this strength to run the race that is set before me. In the mighty name of Jesus, on my own I can do nothing. On my own I can do nothing. I rely on you, the Spirit of God. Boost my energy. Boost your spirit in me to run the race that is set before me. The Spirit will run the race. The Spirit will run the race. The strength will run the race. The grace to run the race. Baba, boost in me. Father, 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 boost in me. In the mighty name of Jesus. The strength I need. The grace I need. To run the race that is set before me. Boost in me, O Lord. 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 For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are going to say, Father... Thank you for your mighty hand of grace that has sustained me and my family to this far. All true in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your grace, your sustaining grace. If it has not been for the grace of God that has been upon our life, where would have been? Where would we have been? What would have been our testimony? That we thank you for your grace. That we thank you for your grace. That we thank you for your grace. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are going to say, Father, let your grace increase mightily upon your church, praise Tabernacle, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your grace increase mightily. Let your grace increase mightily upon your church in the name of Jesus. Baba, increase your grace upon your church. Daddy, increase your grace upon your church. Father, increase your grace upon your church. Father, increase your grace upon your church in the mighty name of Jesus. No more struggle. No more struggle. No more struggle. No more struggle. Let your grace begin to speak. Let your grace begin to speak upon your church. Let your grace begin to speak. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are going to say, Father, let your grace speak 
for my calling, for my business, for my career, for my ministry. Let your grace begin to speak. Let your grace begin to speak. Let your grace begin to speak. For my calling, for my business, in my career, in my ministry. Daddy, let your grace begin to speak. 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 By strength, you say, shall no man prevail. I can't do anything without you, Lord. Let your grace speak. Let your grace speak. Let your grace speak. Let your grace speak. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. We are going to say, Father, please inject in me with the spirit of strength that will sustain me in my days of tribulation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please inject in me the spirit of strength that will sustain me on the days of my tribulation, on my days of trial, on my days when my strength will be faint. Daddy, inject in me the spirit of strength that will sustain me, that will sustain me, that will sustain me, that will sustain me. Inject in me, inject in me the spirit of strength of sustain. All my days of trouble, all my days of trial, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, if we fight in our days of trial, our strength, Baba, inject in us your spirit of strength to sustain us on our days of trial, on our days of trouble, in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are going to say, Father, I hold the blood of Jesus as my sheet against the power that is already spoken against my moving forward in the mighty name of Jesus. I hold the blood of Jesus as a shield against any power position against my moving forward in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. I hold the blood of Jesus as a shield in the mighty name of Jesus. That the let of blood begin to speak. Begin to speak. For in Jesus' mighty name. Last but not the least, we are going to say, Father, Father, enjoy this strength. Appetite. To eat your word. To test for your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, enjoy the strength. That we boost my appetite. That we boost my appetite to eat your word and to test for your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to bring your prayer to a close. We will thank God for answers prayers. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.
in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Say, Father, forgive me for letting fear and worry control my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, forgive me, O Lord, for letting fear and worry to control my mind, to control my spirit, to control my soul. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Lord, be merciful unto me, Lord. Father, forgive me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, forgive me, O Lord. Father, forgive me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, forgive me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Say, Father, keep my feet firm on solid ground. Help me to be consistent and faithful to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, keep my feet on a solid ground, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me to be consistent and be faithful to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, keep my feet on a solid ground. Keep my feet, O oh Lord, on a solid ground, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord, to be consistent and faithful to you always. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Father, help me, O oh Lord, to be consistent and be faithful to you always. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me to be consistent with your work, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Say, Father, help me to continually walk in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord, to continually walk in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord, to continually walk in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Father, help me to continually walk in love. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I'm going to pray against the spirit of weakness. Against the spirit of discouragement. Right to say, Father, when I am weak, Father, strengthen me. When I am discouraged, Father, encourage me. When I am down, Father, lift me up. When I am sick, Father, heal me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Father, when I am weak, Father, strengthen me. When I am down, O oh Lord, Father, lift me up. When I am discouraged, Father, encourage me. When I am sick, Father, heal me, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, heal me, O oh Lord. When I am sick, O oh Lord. When I am weak, Father, strengthen me. Because with my strength alone, I cannot do this work. Father, heal me, O oh Lord. Any time that I am sick, any time I am discouraged, Father, encourage me. Any time that I am down, O oh Lord, Father, lift me up. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Say, Father, I pray that I will be solely and wholly committed, dedicated to my work with you in all the days of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I will solely and wholly committed and dedicated to my work with you in all the days of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I will solely serve you. I will wholly serve you with all my heart, with all my spirit, with all my soul, in all the days of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will wholly serve you, O oh Lord. I will solely serve you, O oh Lord. And I will be committed and be dedicated with my work with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Father, help me, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. The Bible said, he that has put his hand on the plow should not look back. So I'm going to say, Father, as I have put my hand on the plow, I will never look back. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I have put my hand on the plow, O oh Lord, I will never look back. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as I have put my hand on the plow, I will never look back. I will never go tired. I will never go weary. In my work with you, in the mighty name of Jesus, I will never look back, O oh Lord. I will never go back, O oh Lord. I cause I have put my hands on the plow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I have put my hand on the plow. I will never look back. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Father, tonight, we have come to commit ourselves to your work. And we have also come to dedicate and rededicate our spirit, body and soul to do your work, O oh Lord. Father, we ask that you strengthen us. Father, encourage us. 
whatever thing that will make us to procrastinate, whatever thing that will make the spirit of lukewarmness to have its way in our life, Father, let it be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, stretching us so that use us for your glory and everything that we do, we be to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And the people of God will shout it louder. Amen. Let's be on our faith. We are grinding up any moment from now. But this moment we shall be praying for success and all round fruitfulness. Now, there is no way you will do the work of God and you will not experience success if you bring him into the business. But the moment you want to do it alone, that is when frustration will come. That is when you will not experience fruitfulness. So tonight, everything that has been tampering with our success and our fruitfulness in working with God, tonight they are in trouble. So we're going to be praying from God's word, Isaiah 22, verse 5. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. And in that understanding, you will be praying tonight. You say, Oh Lord, my Father, perplex every power contending with my success in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer with understanding tonight. Lord, perplex every power that is contending with my success. In the name of Jesus, every power contending with my success. Tonight I perplex you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of hosts strengthen me to perplex you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are still using that same verse. We are going to go before the Lord. We say, Oh God, my Father, every wall between me and my fruitfulness, I declare you broken tonight. I declare you broken tonight. I declare you crumbling down tonight. Every wall between me and my fruitfulness, tonight I declare you broken down. I declare you crumbled in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, Every wall between me and my fruitfulness. Tonight, I declare you crumble. In the name of Jesus, I declare you crumble. In the name of Jesus, I declare you crumble. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Second Kings, verse te- uh, Second Kings chapter 30, verse 17. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shut! And he shut. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syria in Africa, till thou have consumed them. So tonight, every Syria, consigning your breakthrough, consigning your success and fruitfulness, tonight, the arrow of God will intercept them in the name of Jesus. Remember, we say there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. The same way the foundational forces in your village and the environmental forces where you reside, they are still communicating. But tonight, we are going to call forth the arrow of fire of God. The arrow of fire of God intercepts every forces of the foundation every environmental forces. Tonight, arrow of God intercepts them. In the name of Jesus, I command arrow of God to begin to intercept them. Every foundational forces, every environmental forces, I declare and I decree, let the arrow of God intercept you tonight. Let the arrow of God intercept you tonight. Let the arrow of God intercept you tonight. In the name of Jesus, let the arrow of God Intercept you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Arrow of God begin to intercept them now. In the name of Jesus. Every foundational and environmental forces. 
Let the arrow of God intercept you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Psalm 62, verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. The power belonged unto God. Tonight, if you believe that the power of the power belong to God, you are going to go before the Lord tonight. Lord, oh Lord, my Father, I bind every eerie darkness in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to bind now. Every hearing darkness. Tonight I bind you. I bind every hearing darkness. The scripture says, once has it spoken, twice have I heard this. Lord, I declare tonight, every hearing darkness, I bind you tonight. I bind you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I bind every hearing darkness tonight. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. That same verse we are still praying with it. And you are going to call for, Oh God, my Father, I receive heightened perspective for my fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive heightened perspective for my fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. No more loneliness of perspective. I receive heightened perspective tonight in the name of Jesus. No more loneliness perspective in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive heightened perspective in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We are going to be praying finally with Isaiah 45 verse 1. And we are going to go before the Lord. We are going to ask, Oh Lord, my Father, hold my right hand to subdue all nations contending with my success. Go ahead and begin to tell him now. Lord, my Father, hold my right hand tonight and begin to subdue every power contending with my success. Lord, hold my right hand tonight and begin to subdue every power contending with my success. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. So our Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for we know you are faithful. Lord, according to your word in Colossians 1.18, tonight we ask, O oh Lord, take preeminence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let the believers shout a bigger hallelujah. Steam the moon of prayer, shall we rise and just um, pray for all the ministers that have ministered tonight. Let's pray for them that the Lord God Almighty will increase them in grace and anointing, in wisdom, in power. They will not fail. Their anointing will not run dry. As are the good hands of the Lord will rest upon their family, upon the works of their hands. Let's pray that the anointing God has placed upon them will not diminish. God's grace will not diminish in the name of Jesus. God will cause their light to shine like never before in the name of Jesus. And God will increase his power upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. As that God will honor all that they have spoken tonight. All that they have spoken tonight. The prophecy, the prayers. All that God Almighty will honor it. In the name of Jesus. Cover them and their family with the blood of Jesus. Decree concerning them that the hands of the evil one will not overshadow them. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have all prayed. Thank you God bless us all in Jesus' name. I believe and I know God has started answering our prayers already. And if you believe that, also shout a bigger hallelujah. Okay, we'll be taking our announcements and our offerings. Before the announcement, is anyone paying this or our tithe or you want to pay your tithe or you want to do a transfer of your tithe? We have the account number here, which is 10158653372. And the bank is Zenith Bank. And the name is Praise Tabernacle. Please, if you have done that already, stand to your feet. As you make a decree and declaration concerning this tithe that you have paid, ask God to bring his word to pass. Ask him to remove every devourer. Ask him to bless you like never before and increase you financially, spiritually, and all good ramifications of life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name.
name we have prayed. Lord, we ask that you bless your word upon this life of this one who has paid their tithes in the name of Jesus. Cover the many parts with the blood of Jesus and they will use it for good in the name of Jesus. The hands of the evil one will not come in in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have all prayed. Please, the usher will be standing by while they collect the tithes. And also let's package our offering. It's time to give unto the Lord. The giver has never lacked. Hallelujah. And the hands of the giver are always on top. So giving to the work of God is one great thing and should be something exciting. So if you are packaging your offering already, shall you please stand to your feet? Or you want to do a transfer also. You can do your transfer also to cut number 101-576-5372. Zen Advance. And the name is Priest RCCG Priest Tabernacle. And if you've done that or you've packaged your offering already, please stand to your feet. To make a declaration concerning the offering that you give in as the chorus that give us a shot. Hallelujah.
Let us not forget, in case you want to know more about Ox, visit our website, rctgpraisetabernacle.com, and also our YouTube pages and Facebook pages, rctgpraisetabernacle.com. Hallelujah. So, in case you want to be part of the ongoing, ongoing project, please send your your money to the account number 10166159. RCCG Praise Tabernacle Project is the name, and the bank is Zenny Bank. And also, you want to do your seed faith, your offering, or your, your, your first fruit, you can also do that same bank and same name, but different account number. This one is 10158653372. Hallelujah. And don't forget, all believers and uh, new convert class continue every Sunday after the second service. And let us not forget that tomorrow, Sunday, uh, Sunday Sunday school start from the hours of 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the days where we have our two services. And the days where we have our combined services start from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And all members of Praise Tabernacle must belong to a house fellowship. Praise the Master Jesus. Let the men shout a bigger hallelujah. Let us not forget our program coming up today in TOD from the hours of 9 a.m. Let us not forget also that it starts from the hours of 9 a.m. And the team, once again, is positioned for success. The Lord will bless us all in the name of Jesus. And in case you need the teacher, please meet our pastor, Pastor Goss We He will give unto you three thousand naira only. Praise Master Jesus. The workers and ministers will treat continues tomorrow. Please endeavor to be here from the hours of 5 p.m. And it's very, very compulsory for all workers and ministers. And in case you know as many that are not here today, please endeavor to reach out to them, maybe by calls or text message. It is very, very important. And please, there is no excuse. Please, this is from the pastorate. I believe they will gain more, as we have already gained. So please endeavor to pass this information to them, especially the HODs. Please pass it to your members. Please. Hallelujah. I know the education continues. If you want to join, please meet with our mommy, mommy, Tessie, as the Lord bless us all in the name of Jesus. And in case your house is very far from your, and you want to join the online, um, the online house fellowship, please meet with our pastor, Pastor Bamidele. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. There's joy again in the house. Our brother, one of our brother here, um, Olamide, that's the bishop, one of these on the school personnel, will be getting married. Hallelujah. So he will be bringing a wife to us. Hallelujah. So let's celebrate again and appreciate God for that. Hallelujah. The date is 26th of November this year. November this year. So it's very, very close. So let's endeavor to pray with him. Let's endeavor to reach out to him and see where we can assist him as the Lord bless us all in the name of Jesus. Let us not forget that the Holy Ghost hub is coming up on the 19th of November. Hallelujah, 19th of November. Praise Master Jesus. So everybody should be part of this Holy Ghost hub. And the Lord and the Spirit of God will reach out to us on it in the name of Jesus. Single time out, hold, or hold next week, Saturday, from the hours of 5.30. Please, all singles in the house, endeavor to attend this program to do you good. And also invite your friends and well wishers. The Lord bless us all in the name of Jesus. Then this is a message to all our first time, you know, from um, April, that was when you started worshiping with us here in Praise Tabernacle, up to uh, November, please endeavor to be here. You will be having a get-together with our pastor, Pastor Ebiso Nojego, on the 6th of November. The Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. These are the announcements we have for today. Shall we all be upstanding? As we begin to appreciate God for this great thing that He has done to us all, for the answers to our prayers, for this great retreat. Thank Him for the high opening. Thank Him for the wisdom God has released upon us. Thank Him for the word that we have heard. Thank Him for everything. Thank Him for tomorrow's own. Ask God that in tomorrow's retreat it will be greater, it will be powerful, more impacting in the name of Jesus. Ask God to come down like never before. Ask Him to reach out to you. That everything that will be spoken will be concerning you. The be unto you and the blessing to return unto 
you and the glory will turn unto God. Ask that every minister that the Lord will be using tomorrow's service and tomorrow retreat, that God Almighty will speak through them. God will envelop them with His grace, His mighty hand, His knowledge, His power, and His sweet spirit in the name of Jesus. That they will not speak of their own, but will speak as an oracle of God in the name of Jesus. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. As, as you go home tonight, that the hands of the Lord will continue to watch over you, reach out to you. That the eyes of the Lord will continue to watch over you and your family and the children and all. And the church of God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have all prayed. Father, we thank you because you are a good God. Thank you for the answers to all our prayers. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We ask, O oh God, that you take the glory. In the name of Jesus. Even as we go tonight, O oh God, we ask that your sweet spirit of, will follow us in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are God. And even as we return tomorrow, we'll return in greater strength, greater power, greater zeal in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have all prayed. Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest in the bar with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and joy of the Lord be with us all.